Good morning. All right, we are ready for section 18.6 in math. So if you look on page 362, we're going to go ahead and begin. Now it's telling us that before we move on any further, we want to look at how to measure capacity using the metric system. Remember, most of the world uses the metric system, so it's important to become familiar with it. So as was the case with measuring distance. Now we've already done the metric system using distance. We used this right here, the meter. Uh, remember this right here in the middle is always your unit and each one is 10 less or 10 more. The metric system is very, very simple because it's based on tens, which is what our number system is based on. Uh, pardon me, I had to close the door so I could hear. <clears throat> So, in the, in the metric system, the liquid is the liter. So this meter measures distance or how big or long something is. Gram measures mass, but just for the sake of math, we're just going to say it measures weight. But weight and mass, M-A-S-S, -S, are different. Uh, but for just simply the sake of doing our math, we're just going to say it measures weight. And then liter measures uh, the capacity of, of uh, liquid. Okay, now notice uh, this is kind of in the middle of your paper where it says 10 millimeters. Then it shows the abbreviation ML or ML. Notice that liter, which is your unit that we're doing for um, it's our base, what we call the base unit, the liter. And it can either be abbreviated with a lowercase l or an uppercase l, okay? Now, notice that all of those on your page right there go by the, um, uh, they use the, um, oh my goodness, the, what am I trying to say? Uh, the prefix, um, these are the prefixes. So you, ha you have milli, centi, deci, and then you have your base unit, and then you have your, and these are all less than one. And then you have deca, hecto, and kilo. All right, now, metric dry capacity units. Oh, and by the way, there is a note there on the left side of your page that says the common units are in bold, which are milliliters and liters. They're the only units that you'll be asked to know in this course. And I think the reason is because if you go to the store and you buy a soda, well, if you live in Texas, you buy a Coke, no matter what you buy. But anyway, you'll buy soda. Your soda is measured in liters. You'll probably buy a two liter soda. Sometimes I think they have a two and a half or three liter soda. All right, and then medicine, like when I give my little ones medicine, I have to give it to them in milliliters. Even I took some medicine, I never take medicine, but I took medicine last night because I had a cold and I was coughing and it was measured in milliliters. So uh, that's why they're going to ask you to know milliliters and liters. So liter is your base, milli is your lower, your lowest, your smallest. Now the metric system doesn't have a specific dry measurement system like the U.S. Uh, customary system does. Instead, dried goods are measured using distance units like meters, etc. By mass, while it's technically different for our purposes, we're gonna think of mass as weight, or even using liters. For example, in a metric recipe, you might see the flour specified in grams. I've had that before when I would get on Pinterest or something like that. Uh, even if you get on allrecipes.com and you look for a recipe, you can change it to, from uh, the metric system to customary. And if you put it on metric, then it's gonna give you everything in the metric units. Um, but then you can just click a button and I'll change it for you. So even in the U.S. customary system, food is often sold by weight rather than by capacity. Produce, packaged goods, etc., are often sold by the pound. Remember, we can use whatever unit makes sense in a situation. Units are just tools to help us describe a quantity in a way that others can understand. All right, so let's look and read at the very bottom of this page. It says how the systems compare. So how do the units in the metric and U.S. customary systems compare? A gallon is equal to almost four liters. So the liter is significantly smaller than the gallon. That's why if you ever head to France and you try to fill up a car with gas, you might initially think the price of gas is pretty cheap until you realize that the price is 
per liter instead of per gallon like it is over here. All right, look at the top of 363. Now this is the customary two metric. Uh, these are two uh, ratios that you can uh, write down. One teaspoon. And notice that the little squiggly line, uh, the squiggly lines means that the comparison is not exactly perfect. It's approximate. So one teaspoon doesn't exactly equal five milliliters. All right, so one teaspoon is five milliliters, and then one gallon is 3.78541 liters. Now, now we can go ahead and start with our conversions between the systems. Now, we're just gonna use the same skills that we know. We're gonna do it the same way, the conversion via the ratio shortcut. shortcut. Now, remember, if there isn't an exact ratio from this to that, then you'll have to do it. You'll have to have two uh, parts to your equation. So the first one, the first example says convert 789 milliliters to CL, which would be centiliters. Now, if you'll notice on this chart, milliliter would be here, centiliter would be here, okay? Now it has liter because that's our base unit, but we're down here. So it wants to go from here to here. Well, there's a reason why there's stairs, why this is made by stairs, because when you're going up these stairs, that means you're actually moving the decimal whichever way. If you're going up, that means you're moving it to the left. If you're going down the stairs, you're moving it to the right. That's just kind of an FYI. That's not really gonna play too much of a role in this. So let's see how to do it. Now look up at the top at your ratio. There, uh, there is, um, not a conversion ratio for milliliters to centiliters. Now, this is, this is not between systems. This is from one system to the next. So look at the conversion via the ratio shortcut right there in the middle. Now, 789 milliliters times one centiliter to 10 milliliters. Now, you might say, well, where'd they get that one over 10? Well, because one centiliter is one-tenth of this, okay? So that's where they're gonna get that. So their, and their answer then is gonna be 78.9 centiliters. Now I wanna show you something. If you'll look at the conversion via mental math right next to it, remember we said it would just be 789 divided by 10 because we're going from here to here, which means we're just moving the decimal one place to the left. So it would be this, it would be seven, eight, nine, you know the decimal comes after the nine, so moving it one place to the left would make it 78.9. So that one is a very simple one that you, you could just answer it without actually doing the conversion. All right, let's look at this conversion, this example. This one's going from customary to metric. So we're gonna convert two gallons to milliliters. Now we don't have the conversion ratio between gallons and milliliters. So first, we'll have to convert to from milliliters to uh, liter. No, I'm sorry. Uh, we have to first convert to liters and then to milliliters. So notice that once again, we can do all that in one step. So look at the conversion via the ratio shortcut. So they have two gallons times. Now the closest ratio that they have, if you'll look up there, is one gallon to 3.78541 liters. And so since we want to go to liters because then we want to move to milliliters, we put that on top. Then we multiply the uh, ratio of milliliters to liters. Now, if you'll look right here, here's liters, all right? <clears throat> and then here's milliliters. Now, liters is a thousand, mil, there's a thousand milliliters in one liter, okay? Because notice that it's this many. All right, so then that's where they got that um, uh, that ratio, 1,000 over one, okay? Uh, and you can also know milli is the prefix for 1,000. This is the prefix for 100. This is the prefix for, well, hundredth and then tenth. All right, now, uh, so I think that's all, uh, yeah, that's all of that section. Now let's look at 18.6, your worksheet, 18.6. 
All right, this is kind of the same as yesterday. Uh, you can use your calculator on uh, almost everything except the exponents and the roots on the back of the page. I'm not gonna grade this page, but you're just doing your conversions. You'll probably wanna use this, so if you want to, in a minute when it's finished, you can actually just pause it and leave this on the screen if you want to, or if you have it written down, you can do that too and just use it, but you'll wanna use this so you'll know what your ratios are from one to another. Now, if, it's, if you're converting between these, really and truthfully, just figure out how to move the decimal. You don't even have to write a conversion. But if you're going from customary to metric or metric to customary, obviously you'll have to write your whole, you know, conversion with the ratio shortcut. All right, okay, so I'm just gonna let you have 18.6. You know how to do the conversions. If you need any help, let me know. Otherwise, I think you can do this pretty well. All right, that will be all for today.